Right. Shall I start mm. recording for pre-show? Yes. Yes, please. So, uh, as a spoiler for what recording I got... Recording in progress. <laughs> as a spoiler for what I got this week, um, did anyone else get the wrong set from Amazon still? Everyone is getting the wrong set okay. from Amazon. Okay. Amazon it has not and seemingly will not fix that. Okay. Well, I... That that blows my mind, because I'm going to be really mad when I get the same set again. I don't think you're going to get the same set again. Well, okay. no, I got I got the uh, the cheaper set from Pulse. Oh, and then, yeah, then you're going to get the same set again. And then, yeah, yeah. You're going to get the same set again, because well, yeah, Amazon we'll see. apparently got the listings backwards. Right, well, see, I got today, I got what I thought was supposed to be Senator Shockwave and Orion Pax. But it was the minor Megatron and Ratbat who I didn't want, so I ordered the minor Megatron and Senator Ratbat from Amazon, hoping I get. You should. Yeah. So you should get the right thing, Don. You're yeah. part of the problem. You need to tell Amazon they messed up. It's not like I'm a CEO of a company that has a lot of power. You know that I can just call up Bezos and say, "Hey." Hey, hey, we got a problem. And I can't do Are that. Are you telling me yeah, not, not even Hasbro? From Don do Hasbro. <laughs> I mean, I looking. Can't, I can't believe Don Hasbro is not capable of this. I mean, I'll be honest. Looking at the box, the Rat Bat and the Minor Megatron, the at least looking at it kind of in person ish, looked better than I thought. It's just, I really didn't want that Scourge mold again because the Generation Senator Rat Bat is so nice. And I didn't want that Siege Megatron again, especially with some of the QC issues I've heard. Um, so the only pr the problem with that Megatron that we've identified is that the knees are installed backwards, and there is pin pushing apparently involved in fixing that, but it's not super difficult. And I guess when you reverse that, it does actually like fix the knees up where it can stand again. Yeah, I'll be honest. I might just try to sell it. I don't know yet. I haven't. I, again, I just opened it while ago, and I thought, "All right, I got the no." Yeah, and that was kind of like because that's put my fault for not remembering about that. But I've there's so many pre-orders coming out. I thought I had juggled everything properly, and I didn't. No, so, you did. Amazon is the one that screwed screwed up. Yeah, I love that Hasbro has issued that Siege Megatron mold so many times. They now have to Trojan horse it into your home. <laughs> I mean, well, uh, one of the the guy that uh, one of the web comics I, fo I follow is called Between Failures, and the uh, the writer and artist of that, uh, he and I follow each other, and he got the set, and apparently his Megatron won't even stand up. He oh, he, he had to go in and do some fixes on it. Yeah, and and we talked uh, briefly on Twitter. That mold is basically Siege and Earthrise Megatron are just about practically eighty five percent of the same toy. Yeah, and. So it's been used Earthrise Megatron, Siege Megatron, G2 Hero Megatron, G2, well, Hero Megatron, G2 Megatron, right. the Megatron that came with the purple dinosaur in the set, the this Megatron, and that's the just... Megatron, the Megatron that came with uh, the Target Master in the previous set. That's right. So it's There's like, two Netflix the, versions of that. The yeah. Takar Premium one. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm saying, I, I mean, the six 35th that... anniversary... Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. This, those are the I forgot about the 30th anniversary. <laughs> um, and it's like that's just what seven molds domestically, not counting. Oh yeah, and shattered glass and shattered. Yeah, that's right, shattered glass. So it's like, thank you, Rusty. Yes. So it's like really, it's been used at least seven times to, for domestic releases, not counting what Takara has run for their markets that got imported over here, that you couldn't call the same thing. So let's just say what ten say roughly 10 uses of that Earthrise Siege mold, dear God, let it die. <laughs> Kill it if you have to. Yeah, I, I, I think we might be up to 10. Can we take a bet? Would anyone take the bet that this is the last time that mold's going to be used? Or um, It would depend a lot if we had like some existing indication that a new Megatron toy was coming, which we don't right now. It's true. Because, uh, you know, if Evan can figure out a way to make a Studio Series 86 Megatron that satisfies <clears throat> everyone internally, 
like we will have that and we probably probably will not see the siege mold family again hey uh or it will be 75 percent the siege megatron again i well i could see it being basically that engineering again but be all new parts and maybe a tiny bit bigger Hey, Chris, you and I have worked retail for similar companies in the past. You worked um, retail? Yeah. Well, in, in the huh. past. In the past. And me. Uh, oh, that's, oh, yeah, that's right. You work for service merchandise. Yeah. I'm going to forget at, that. We talk about it so much. Yeah. yeah. Look, in, look in our chat at tfradio.net slash discord at what Anony says uh, about the picture he posted of the top of his soda display. Um. Okay, that's a no-no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, that is That's so awesome. many. That is so many flavors. I'm impressed. They must have it wedged between like yeah. two of those twelve packs. They have to. Yeah, there's got to be another bookend. That yeah, so it's like picture. I am both terrified and, and impressed awed and impressed yeah. at the same time. Yeah, that is gonna friggin' Donkey Kong somebody to death here. Yeah, yeah, it really is. <laughs> I agree with what Anani says, though. They had regional management at their store today, and yeah, I also hope that disaster piece was left intact for them to see, because that, that's going to get somebody yelled at. Seriously. Well, uh, If I've they been... knew there was a regional inspection coming, I cannot believe store management, during their pre-visit walkthrough, let that be. Like, I just absolutely cannot believe that was allowed to happen Pro... after anyone saw it. I believe what happened was they were so busy focusing on making sure all of the compliance issues, like all the paper compliance issues were done, gun logs were done, all, all the paperwork that can really get you deemed, and the store was zoned, but they were just looking at the stuff that this is supposed to be done, this is supposed to be done, this is supposed to be done. That's day-to-day -day stuff that shouldn't have happened, but that a lot of managers would even look at that. That's the stuff well, I would do when I worked there. Yeah, okay, so like my experience working at Walmart with, you know, a upper management inspection coming through, like for days prior to the visit, the store was being worked on by, you know, all hands on deck kind of stuff. Like during that period, we had even uh, during one of the resets taken the risers down store-wide as a directive. Mm. And when the regional manager was coming, we put them all back up because the regional manager liked there being risers in the store. So we put those up for about 10 days total, a few days before and a few days after the visit. Then they all came down again. Like, what? that's the kind of like, that's the kind of like micromanaging kind of stuff that I'm experienced with store management and like assistant managers, like seeing, making sure it gets done. Like, yeah, the store manager and the co-managers probably were worried about like the back end paperwork stuff, like Don is saying uh, from his, you know, service merchandise experience days. But like the assistant managers and whatever the, you know, whatever the internal hierarchy is now for the management because it's changed since I worked there. But like all of them, their jobs would be to be walking through there, especially like day of visit, walking and looking at everything to make sure that there's nothing that that regional manager is going to see and be like, <laughs> the that hell is, is that? That is a so. major <laughs> safety compliance. But, yeah. but, but I'll tell you what happened to me. Many years ago, I worked at a place that we sold CDs when they were still using those white plastic anti-theft devices that didn't work service merchandise yeah and we got in two shippers of backstreet boys cds Ooh. oh is this is this the um change the labels by one yeah. cent story? yeah I, I didn't yeah. yeah yeah i had to price everything up two cent even though i told my immediate supervisor this is probably a system error it'll self-correct tomorrow yeah and then i had to go back the next day and he wouldn't let me re label over them i had to peel them all off and then relabel them that's uh -huh. that's, that's the kind of micromanaging that yeah went into yeah and that was the same manager that you told there were, it would probably correct itself the next day yeah he said look this happens all the time <laughs> of course it's, it, it's a it's a two cent price difference if we wait till tomorrow it'll self-correct on the on the system or we'll get a message saying this this disregard this price change, but he said no, we have to do it today. So it took me three and a half hours 
to open the displays, take everything out, because I had to verify the counts while I was doing it anyway. Mm-hmm. Oh, of course. To turn in the ca- to turn in the price change to, uh, amount, and then I had to do the exact same thing the day, the day next day. And then he asked me the day after that, "Why didn't you get your other stuff done?" Well, yeah, no, of course. Like you, of course, you should have been doing your other work while you were doing this task. Yes, he probably yeah. went home and told his wife or his girlfriend, "Guess what? I made this guy do. I made you know, him okay, label so, everything." Yeah, I mean, but yeah, but people that don't work retail do not understand the level of pettiness that some people have for other people because I, it's like the area I was running was electronics, but I never ran my department. Because I was always doing projects for him, yeah. and then he would say, "Well, why isn't this done? Well, uh-huh. you know why it's not done. You had me doing this. Oh, my camera's off. Let me turn my camera on." So when I worked at Walmart, part of the time I actually did work in the toy department there. Um, I got transferred there from um, the pet department where I started out, which that itself is a whole like big mess. But like um, when they transferred me over to toys the assistant manager over that side of the store told me, like, yeah, we're going to hire on a mid-shift person to come and basically, like, you know, handle the afternoon projects for the department so you can come clock in at 4, 4.30, and, like, start zoning the department, start cleaning up and organizing everything for the night shift right when you clock in. Well, that mid-shifter never got hired, which, you know, is just one of many lies the managers told me uh, in my time there. And so, like... I was expected when I clocked in to continue projects until 6 o'clock, because 6 o'clock is the cutoff. After that point, you're supposed to be zoning your department. Um, So I was the only person working that department for four out of the five nights every week that I was on shift. And, Don, you know how big and, like, packed one of those toy departments is. Like, one person cannot do that solo in the space of like four hours. I mean, if you get six pallets of toys off the truck and they start pulling to the floor on an average of between six and nine, give or take. Yeah, they didn't start pulling stuff at my store until after nine thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so you've got multiple pallets of fr- cleaning up the aisle, just the hot wheels aisle alone. Yeah. To, to pick it up would take hours just to get yeah. it done properly. But yeah. the thing the thing is with a lot a lot of retail places across the board, they want it done quick and wrong <laughs> just to say we did it, even though it doesn't look right. And if you take the time to do it right, it looks like you're wasting time. Yeah. And my my department manager specifically wanted the zone to be accurate. And, you know, when she would come in the next morning and, like, go through and check over the department and would see that, she would be making notes in her logbook for the day. When I clocked in, I got to hear all about it, you know, like, you know, everything that I got in the wrong place or, you know, whatever. So, like, yeah, the the salaried management wanted the job to just be done. She wanted the job to be done right and... Basically, I couldn't follow either direction because I was getting it from both sides. Exactly. No matter well, what I did. Well, there was one time where I was told because our pool chemicals had come in. Now, you know, pool chemicals require. Oh, boy, pool chemicals. Everybody's yeah, favorite. <laughs> yeah. Pool chemicals require very special setups to keep certain ones away from some other ones. Absolutely. Other, otherwise, you have a thing called boom and uh, not the you either have You either have boom or you literally have poison gas wafting through the store right so all the either way is fine yeah Yeah. (laughs) all all the chemicals had come in but we had no layout so we were told go we have to get this stuff out go ahead and make your own based on last year's and we'll and we'll adjust it when it drops at least everything will be out there so i stayed over with the toy manager about three hours we got everything done everything was out the next day the layout dropped and we had to completely flip the row and he wouldn't let me keep the overtime because he because said, you could never have overtime yeah but he's the one that he, he's the one he's one of the managers to keep telling you everything. don can you stay can you stay we really need you can you keep you, you keep your overtime 
every Friday, Don, you got to take a four-hour lunch. Uh-huh. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, Sean's asking where Brian is. Brian is celebrating his wedding anniversary tonight with his family. And we tolerated his crap whoa, for 15 whoa. years. Wait a minute. A wild John Don DeLuna D- has joined the chat. Holy, <laughs> hey. holy hey, moly. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm filling in for Brian. Just uh, invoice only. Yeah. Beautiful. I'm, awesome. I'm not driving. Oh, it's all right. Oh, we missed those, that voice. God. Yes, the, the, <laughs> those, those dulcet tones. Indeed. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Who walked in? Oh, us. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Don, if you grew your hair out a little more, you could be Larry. Yeah, I need a hair. I need a haircut. Hmm. I guess you could shave the rest of it off and just be curly, then. Hmm. Yeah. It's it's a work in progress. Do a comb over and be champ. I don't know. Okay, I got a question then. Since Stu just came up, <laughs> curly or shimp? Who's curly. your favorite? Um. So when I was young, the answer absolutely would have been curly. I think the shimp ones are actually like better written and performed because like they'd had you know fifteen years more experience for most of those, and like you know their performances were just that much better. Because, you know, I'm torn myself because I saw this on Twitter somewhere and I thought, I, 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 will I am not getting that conversation. That That is a sure <laughs> way. That's a, that's a landmine. Shemp is underrated, but yeah. I will still go with Curly. I don't like Shemp's idiosyncrasies so much, but the quality of the product as a whole, I think, was better with Shemp. One of my favorites is a Curly episode, Malice in the Palace, where they're like, you know, the the people in the red they're doing the restaurant and the then the guys thinks they're cooking the cat and the dog and that for, was that was a that was a shemp don that was that shemp I thought it that was, was okay i am sorry I, I thought that was curly but i like that one a lot too oh did y'all happen to ever see that lunar optimus went up on bbts and was gone yes I saw it. I never saw it. I never saw anything about it till today, uh, and it was already like gone. Sold out, gone. Yes, both. There's oh. two versions, and both are sold out. I never saw anything on that from any source. That was I got an email. Blood, so yeah, I got an email. But, yeah, okay. I got an email too. I, I mean, I get the emails, but I never. Did you open the email? Yeah. Is that it? Well, <laughs> I think I opened them all because it, it was a direct link. Okay. All right. I just. You know, I'll be honest though. After I didn't the, buy it. But. No, after seeing the price, it was like <clears throat> we I knew think, that was going to happen. Yeah, I know, I know. But it's like I think I'm good with not getting this one. I, I want it, and it may be like AVO Swerve. You know, Swerve was a little more attainable. I don't think so, but I mean, that was it was kind of a different situation. Yeah, I know, but it was still. I mean, I had to trade two leader class 07 brawls. For the two AVO swerves I've got, but I only paid thirty five dollars for my swerve. Well, this was the bot. This was the bot con right after they came out, and ah. one of the guys was coming from Scotland, and they were everywhere. Uh, every dealership, because you know you're you're, you're yeah. in Europe there. Right. Yeah. Everyone had AVO swerves. Every car dealership had AVO swerves. I said yes. I will. I will take two. One for me and one for my friend Fred. Yeah, he said. Well, uh, well, have you got leader class, leader class brawl? I said, Yeah, I can get you leader class brawls. That's not a problem. <laughs> I mean, at the time, fifty bucks for Avio Swerve was a steal. At the time, yeah, no, I remember because um, some of me and John's longtime uh, friends. We're actually importing them from a European car dealer, and like the swerve itself was not all that expensive to do that. The shipping for one was like a hundred and ten dollars. Here's here's the thing I want. I want the other colors. There's supposed to be two other colors. There's one that was it's, it's either a blue or a yellow one that was the red was if you took the test drive, if I remember correctly. Uh-huh. The blue was they gave one to the dealership, and then there was a yellow one. I maybe get my the yellow one 
was some kind of extremely exclusive. Some I can't. I don't know. I, I've never found out what that was. But there's supposed to be a red, which is the common, the blue or the yellow, and then the other one. And I've never seen the any of them in, in existence. Yeah, I mean, from what you described, the blues and yellows, whatever number of them existed, probably went home with like the dealership managers when you know the the conditions were never satisfied to actually give them away. But I'll be honest. I think AVO Swerve is a really... I mean, we'll never see that figure produced again unless they have some reason as a retro release or something. No. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect so. It's, it's not a bad toy for, you know, a 2006 to 2007 developed item. Yeah, well... Um, it doesn't stand up that great to, like, even relatively modern toys, but right. like, I will, I'll always appreciate it for just the, you know ordinary ass car vehicle mode yeah. those are some of my favorites well uh vangelis did a review on him a long time ago and yeah. he and he, he brought up a good point it's that weird kind of in between movie and alternators it, it's kind of a weird pocket between those two and that's kind of like like if he was on an alternator shelf i think or a vinyl tech shelf i think he would look pretty good if it's not a bit small yeah if not a bit small yeah like like he's a Legends class alternator versus the the regular size ones. My brain just uh, is refusing to acknowledge that logic. On, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I understand. I understand rationally everything you just said, but my brain is just like, no, we're not agreeing with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's there's a lot of figures like that throughout the history of the line that I think are older figures. It's like for third party. Defender, the first fully transformable third party, which I think is still one of the most important in the history of third party, but no one no one ever talks about it anymore. It uh, aged out pretty quick. Because because I've transformed it and I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. No, Don, you're right. From a development standpoint, it holds a very important place in getting us to um, the, the special hell that was especially like 2014, I want to say. I mean, if you combine Defender and Fans Project City Commander Armor, those two right there are probably linchpins of the third-party history. Well, like, City Commander was the first third-party thing I ever bought. Yeah. I think I, I got the second run of that. Uh, and then I got the extra set that was the shoulder missile pack and the rifle. And then eventually, many years later, I sold it on to... I think I sold it to Eric, actually. I wound up training one of my BotCon free... The freebies that came with the set. I don't remember which one it was, but one of... Oh, it was... Yeah, it was one of the auto troopers from the three... The th auto troopers that we got that year. Okay. I, I got $100 in trade toward the Nim to the Rodimus Prime add on armor that Fans Project did. That was a hard to get one. Oh yeah. Alright, it's um slightly after seven thirty. Well seven thirty for me, eight thirty for everybody else. So let's uh actually no I've got I got back up in central time here now that John's here. Hooray I'm not alone anymore. Hmm. All, right, All right. Let me stop this recording and start a new one. Yeah I'm gonna start a new one also. Recording stopped. Recording in progress. All right, good. Three, two, one. This is Radio Free Cybertron, episode 838. I'm XV, filling in for Brian, who hopefully is having a very nice uh, anniversary dinner with his family tonight. Happy 15th anniversary to the Kilbys. Um, we have a special guest in the studio tonight, filling in for Brian, sort of, at least, you know, taking the empty seat. We have John DeLuna with us for the first time in, what, like 10 years? Uh, oh, at least 25 years. At yeah, least. I mean, it, just, it feels like forever, John. I'm really glad to have you here this week, though. Oh, thanks. Yeah, and, uh, you know, with Brian out, there was there's a void that can never be filled in our hearts, but I'll do my best tonight to, uh, to come back uh, one night only, uh, and then let's see how it goes. So I'm really happy to be here. Hey, guys. Now, you know you are obligated to buy something during the show if you're actually like you know filling in for kilby that was that part of the deal yeah yeah if, okay. you, if you look if you look on page three of the contract in the klingon text 
we always, well, we always uh, hide the good stuff in the Klingon text. Maybe, uh, you know, instead of buying some like rare $800 uh, Japanese transformer, I might find like a pack of batteries on Amazon. So that technically, <laughs> technically fulfills the contract. TFRadio.net slash Amazon for all your battery needs. Hey. <laughs> um, also here we have Rob Clay. Hello. Matt, a.k.a. Melvar. Hello. Headmaster Don. Hello. And streaming for us, as is his custom when Brian's not here, we have Diecast. Hey, everybody. Diecast gets it a little bit easy when Brian's not here, because, like, when Brian is here, Brian hosts and produces the show all at the same time. Like, he does everything. We just have to sit here and talk. Um, when Brian's not here, I sit here and do all the talking, and Diecast just gets to sit there and quietly produce. Like, it, I think... Brian somehow was able to do the work of two of us at the same time, and I just can't wrap my head around that, but, like, I feel like it goes a little easier for me and Diecast when we can, like, split that load. Definitely. Given that I'm doing the backup recording, it might you might say three people. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, like, we just, we have to spread all this out when Brian's not here to, like, shoulder most of the burden for us every week. It's It's kind of amazing. I don't know how Brian does what he does. Like, he just never stops. I know the caffeine's a big part of it, but, like... There's just something about the way he's wired that just does not make any sense to me. It still doesn't make any sense to me. I've known him for, you know, over 20 years, because that's how long RFC's been on. RFC is the original toy and, like, you know, general geek nerdery podcast on the internet. Since 1999, before a podcast was even a word, it's um, staggering is a word for how long we've been around and how far back our archive goes. You can find all of our, uh, you know, back catalog of show at tfradio.net. We even have, you know, spinoff podcasts that sadly are a little defunct at this point, but there's a ton of stuff at tfradio.net for a variety of topics and, like, go check that stuff out. Like, there's some genuinely cool stuff in there, and then there's also, like, you know, fanboy verses. And new Soundwave. Oh, new Soundwave was great. No, I mentioned fanboy verses Mm -hmm. specifically because, um, this episode is um, our annual J.D. Church Memorial Podcast. Uh, J.D. Church was one of the original hosts of the reboot of RFC, which uh, started back in 2009. Unfortunately, uh, J.D. passed away in early 2014. And um, I don't know about the rest of you. I imagine it's, the, the, it's also the case. But, like, there's hardly a day that goes by that at some point or another I don't think of J.D. still. Like, you know... Someone will say something like, yeah, that, that just makes me think of JD, or I'll see something like, JD would have loved the hell out of that. Like, they're just, JD became such a presence in our lives, and most of us only met him once or maybe twice. Like, we did not get to know JD in person near as much as we would have liked to. Um, you know, I think uh, at least a couple of us here maybe never met him at all. Which, I like, never got the chance to meet him in person. Yeah, only only a very few uh, um, shows that we were on together. Yeah. But, yeah, he was great. He uh, spent, uh, what was it, one night or two nights at uh, my apartment back in the, the glory days of conventions. And yeah, super yeah for, um, for BotCon 2012. Yeah. And uh, yeah, super fun, nice guy. And uh, I certainly, every time the show co- uh, gets posted every week, I think of JD uh, at least. So at least once a week, I think of mm-hmm. him because he he became such a part of the of the show in that in that incarnation of it. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a it's, you know, it's a shame that we lost him so soon. But um, when we did have him, uh, it was always just fun and we were laughing and he'd always have something you know funny to say or a story every week so uh we have those memories and um you know um that's definitely worth something but wish he was here shout out to jd uh wherever you are but um yeah it's great to it's great to always stop for a second every year uh, at least and acknowledge him and remember him and like i said for me personally every time the show goes up uh i mean i think a little thought to jd and even in the very few interactions I had with him, he definitely left an impression. And it's heartbreaking that we lost him so early at yeah, such absolutely. a young age. The the one I say this every year, but the one memory with JD that always sticks out to me uh, was when Chris McFeely was on, and he and Chris did a complete 
synopsis of Themyscira High, which would have been Wonder Woman on the CW, like Smallville. <laughs> and they just kept feeding off of each other. And it was this incredible just, it's like I can see it unfolding in my head. And they just, it was this incredible. We And I was just about to fall the chair laughing. It was just, <laughs> just absolutely one of the most hysterical things. And, he, and him and Gavin, you know, he would always break out into the Gavin theme song. Uh, well, well, his interpretation <laughs> of, the, of yeah. the Gavin theme song. Yeah, yeah. so like, that's one of my favorite, like, cumulative memories of JD that I functionally stole him from RFC and Fanboy Versus to come and be on my uh, Tokusatsu themed podcast at the time. And like, my show was so much the better for it too. Cause like JD, like to Don's point about the Themyscira High thing, JD just had this gift to be able to fill the air with like coherent, cognizant conversation about just any kind of subject you put to him. Like, he would talk, and he would talk for as long as he needed to talk, and then, you know, he would take a pause so that other people could then, you know, talk also. Like, he didn't ever dominate a show he was on, but, like, there was always going to be activity on any podcast he was on because JD would not allow dead air to be a thing. Like, he was amazing <laughs> in being able to do that and just, like, spawn forth ideas, too. You say he didn't dominate the shows he was on, but the, he had the ability to dominate some of the shows he was on. I will, wanted to, yeah. <laughs> like, not even trying to. It was He was just that kind of guy. I will forever remember his synopsis of Go Ranger, the first episode of Go Ranger on Superhero Time. That was an experience to listen to. The, the thing that I always remember uh, about JD is that, yeah, he could... You know, when he, like I said, when he wanted to, he could dominate a conversation as two different stripes of nerd. We occasionally crawled up each other's backs, I think, <laughs> but he would always, always have me laughing in the same episode, regardless. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's just, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's maybe dominating is not the right word for this, but like there's, there's dominating. And then there's like not letting anybody else have a chance. Like JD was respectful of all of his other co-hosts oh, being yeah. able to participate with the show. JD could totally like take the lead position on anything he wanted to, you know, get involved in if he wanted to, but he was never in such, he would never do it in such a way that like you couldn't air your opinions and like actually have a conversation with him. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've been on a podcast with, and it's with people that was the opposite of that. And I, and, we've all listened to podcasts like that. Too. Yeah. Like you might be yeah. listening to one right now. Cause I'm doing that. <laughs> but yeah, JD, and JD was just, he saw the world so differently. And then when he brought it up, it's like, yeah, I can see that, you know? Yeah. yeah. JD has a special place in my heart. And, like, that will never be filled. No one can ever take that place. There's friends I've made in the meantime, like, since his passing, where it's like, oh, he would have loved JD if they could have ever met or, you know, interacted online. And it's just like, mm -hmm. it makes me so sad that can never happen because, like, they would have got such a kick out of each other. <sighs> but, yeah. Um, I don't want to belabor this too long, but, like, I'm, I'm glad that we get to, you know, have a special moment every year to share our memories of JD and... I wish he was still here with us. And JD, wherever you are, if you can hear us, man, I love you. I miss you. I wish you were here. All right. Into um, plus heavy, serious topics. Um, toy nerdery. So we have some new stock photos of Beast Wars versus Zero Five, Rat Trap versus Pterosaur. Uh, this is, of course, um, further repaint of the Kingdom toys. Uh, for Takara's, you know, milk everything for every last cent they can get out of it, uh, subline. I, I'm dismayed that uh, Pterosaur still has those odd black parts that I can't figure out the origin of. Um, if some of you might remember way, way back at this point with uh, Takara Tomi's Legends line, when Cup was first solicited in that, there was a lot of wrong plastic colors on that. And then with subsequent stock photos... Um, the colors got corrected to what the toy actually was. I was hoping that would be the case here, but it doesn't seem to be so. So I think, like, 
I think that the nylon sprue where that black is coming from, I just don't know what they were going for that like made that necessary in one part of the toy that everything else had to come with it, like the hands and the ankles. It it is really like breaking my brain trying to figure out what the motivation for that was. I don't I don't understand it myself. No. So. I mean, there there is still a tiny smidge of hope in that it, they do all have the, you know, coloring may be different on final product warning at the bottom, but still. Yeah. Um, the other thing we're seeing for the first time here is that Rat Trap has little whiskers painted on. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's nice. He's otherwise uh, kind of dull. He's not, he doesn't come across as wrong like Pterosaur, but he's, uh -huh. there's nothing to write home about with Rat Trap, but that is a nice touch. Yeah, I mean, Rat Trap was basically right when it came out in Kingdom the first time. Like, there's tweaks that could be done to it to make it a little bit more accurate, but, like, for what was there to work with, they kind of had it the first time around, and when the Netflix one was done, like, they were basically just making lateral moves at that point already. Like, there wasn't a lot of meat to work with here, and it seems like the most they could do was paint whiskers on it, because now they have the paint budget for that. Again, this is great if someone was not able to get the Golden Disc Pterosaur. And, like, the, the buzzworthy toy-accurate one might not be to everyone's taste. I didn't even really care for it in actual practice. Um, but, like, yeah, this set is... This set is, like, niche among niche, I think, for uh, the interest overlap here. Yeah, and I've said this before every time we brought this up. I'm glad this set exists. I'm glad they're doing it together because this means... Everything is set up for Fractal and Pack Rat. That's yeah, what, and I hope that happens. That's what I am willing to respend the money for on those two molds. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like that's going to happen this year, potentially, because um, on that uh, last Hasbro stream, they said Antagony was our last selects reveal for the year. Well, my guess is when by the time Ratchet and Brawn come out, Next year, we're going to have another death on the shuttle set. So my guess is it'll be you coming out. can only out. hope. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm guessing it'll be around that time because we're getting all these box sets kind of hitting very cl relatively close together. Yeah, So maybe. So my guess is they'll be uh, doing that, uh, the, that set in conjunction with the death on the shuttle part two. Yeah, possibly so. Um it's also possible, like, Fractal and Pack Rat may end up in, like, an Amazon capsule down the road, too. Like, there's there's different places that could come out. As long as it's I hope not it does. Walmart, so we have a chance of actually getting it. I don't think it would be Walmart, because, like, if it was a deluxe and a core class and a two-pack together, that would be, like, an unusual price point situation, I think. So that would be something that Amazon would be able to do more easily than Walmart, where it's kind of got to fit into, a you know, a space on a shelf. So... I'm, I'm kind of interested uh, for this next story, both for Matt and Don's perspectives on it. So we have um, what's probably a genuine uh, solicitation for Masterpiece Yellow Trailbreaker and Toy Colors MP44. So what I like about this is it appears that they use parts from both Trailbreaker and Hoist to make it as toy accurate as possible. Mm -hmm. I am all for that. Okay, well, what don't you like about it? I didn't say there was anything I don't like about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, that's my mistake for interpreting your framing of it in that way. Uh, what do you think about Toy Colors MP44? Yawn. Well, there you go. That that satisfies me. Don. <laughs> well, I am not the die clone person that Matt is. I have a few figures. I've bought some of the the mainline die clone repaints just because they're good molds and good colors i did buy burnout because of matt yours recommendations on the colors. you're welcome yeah <laughs> but um i'll be honest i have the uh from a couple of years ago at T from tfcon they did their trailbreaker in those yellow colors and like you said chris I do like the way the hoist, I, I like the way M-Piece hoist looks, but I have a good hoist with the X-Trans bots. So okay. I'm waiting, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for 
that hoist in a die clone so I can have the hoist mold in a color I don't have because I've already got a yellow representation. What if they do this trail breaker in blue? Hmm. The problem is I don't like that Takara trail breaker. There's too much hoist in that trail breaker. And I, unless they use, unless this die clone mix match looks better than the trail breaker, trail breaker, I don't know. It, it's just, it, it would have to look right, which is not, which is, doesn't say a lot. I know. Well, this does look right because it looks like the toy, <laughs> which is what it's going for. Right. Right. Again, but again, I'm not the die clone person that a lot of people like these homages. It doesn't really mean that much to me unless. And yet I speak to you anyway. <laughs> well, we all do. I mean, if, okay. So if they're going for, this much already like it doesn't feel that far out of uh out of the realm of possibility that like a little later on we're gonna see a lift ticket that's just a straight hoist recolor oh absolutely i think the optimus prime is great though because he was super expensive when he came out the original with the trailer this mm -hmm. doesn't appear that it'll have the trailer with it, it doesn't, but it doesn't no. seem like it now yeah so he should be cheaper and it's been so long since probably he's been in the market. Some, probably somewhere close to what they charged for the Nemesis repaint of it a couple of years ago. Probably. I that, yeah. Yeah, but I, I well, think... Well, actually, they, probably more now, but yeah. They need yeah. to get that Optimus Prime mold out again uh, for people who didn't have a chance to get it the first time. And this is if this is the way to, to do it, to make it a toy, toy accurate, or, you know, it's not that much different toy wise than the uh than the animation yeah so what this seems to have is um metallic colors um it's toy like, colors on the animation model basically yeah right yeah. which is about all they can really do yeah um not, it's not, not a lot <laughs> it's not that different in principle from the uh plus version of mp megatron 2.0 no. um you know that had some new tooled parts but predominantly that was you know toy details on a cartoon body i still really like the way that looks but i don't have any desire to actually own that toy in a meaningful sense and well, as you mentioned i think this had some knee issues so hopefully they fix that uh hmm. in this well i'll be perfectly honest uh i never looked at seriously getting mp44 dynamics has its limits <laughs> uh, and MP44 really was not something I was willing to put that much money into. When I have MP10, I had the uh, Magic Square, the first version of the Light of Justice, their Optimus Prime. I had the Transform Element Optimus Prime. All three did, did it a little bit differently, and they were all much more affordable. I wound up getting the KO of MP44 just to bought with some of the accessories. <sighs> Just just to sit on the shelf to look good because I got it for like eighty nine dollars. Theft. I know, I know. But now <laughs> you could get this for like two hundred and seventy five. Right, oh, but here's the yeah. thing though: this that doesn't looking at the pictures, it doesn't do anything I need it to do for that money. You know, it's just it it's 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 MP forty four. Yes, is it more affordable? Yes. Does it do something new, unique, different to make me go, hey, I like that. I, what I have doesn't do that. I want it. It's like. But this other, may be for other people. So. Well, I, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm just yeah. saying for me, for me personally, it's like other night, Christian and I were looking at some stuff for the house and she brought up something. And I said, do you really think we'll get the use out of this that we're thinking? And she said. Do you need another Optimus Prime? I said, that's very fair. <laughs> you know, I said, that's very fair. <laughs> if the Prime does something unique or different that what I already have doesn't do. Yeah. This yeah. does. This, if you couldn't get, if you wanted MP44 and couldn't get it the first time around, get this thing and I hope you enjoy it. Do, Me, you, re <laughs> do you remember when the price point for MP44 was announced? And I think it was my take on it at the time, like, what they should have done here is release the cab robot as a release by itself, and then later on, you know, do, like, a special edition or something of 
cab and trailer together for that higher price point, but make the core robot the main release at the more affordable price. Like, they've kind of done this backwards because MP44 Plus would have been the perfect thing to have the trailer come with uh, versus the original form because, like, the trailer as it's represented in Masterpiece is much more about replicating what the toy did originally with the combat deck and the repair bay functions. Uh, those were basically never a thing in the cartoon, and for the Masterpiece purpose, you might as well have just had the cartoon-accurate robot by itself. Um, and at this point, this toy-accurate one's going to be kind of incomplete because you need that MP44 regular release trailer, so you already had to have spent the $450 on that to have that to complete this new release. I mean, If they were to do a separate trailer for this with the uh, Diaclone label on the side instead of the you know Optimus Prime stripe, I might actually be interested in that. I mean, that that's something I think maybe they could do the Takara version of HasLab for. Possibly. to Like they did for the Grand Maximus reissue I mean, of... Takara Tomu Mall. Yeah. Well, I, or whatever the uh, lunar prime yeah, fire, one. I think. Yeah, because yeah. you know, I, I think I think Rob, I think Rob's onto something. A die clone thing trailer to go with the toy Optimus would, in my head, works really well. And to car tell me wouldn't be out a lot of money if it didn't. I mean, there'd be you know some money involved, sure, but I think that'd be the safest way to go. So they get more sales off the Optimus, and then they can piggyback the sales from the trailer on top of that. Without without as much risk. No, One, actually, like I think just going straight through to Karatomi Mall with the Battle Convoy trailer, as a you know, if we get two thousand pre-orders for this, we'll make it. If not, you won't get charged anything. Like that would be actually a good way to do that to make that available to the probably small subset of collectors that actually would want to have that. Because I mean, the Diaclone collect. Oh, let's be honest. A lot of the classic Diaclone collectors, they have money. They, if you're they have to, I mean, well, you, no, yeah. they used to have money now, they have a diaclone collection, yeah. <laughs> right. but I'm saying if you're a diaclone collector, you're going to generally have deeper pockets because of the rarity and the the multitudes of diaclone stuff that came out that was existed long before Transformers was around. So, this would be the best way to get that, like you said, that smaller subset of people into it, but they would be willing to buy probably two. You know, one for the one for the vehicle mode, one for a robot mode. If they got two of the figures, yeah, Diaclone collectors are kind of like 1964 GI Joe collectors versus right. 1982 GI Joe collectors. Like, you can only get into that if you had a job that had a pension. There's just no yeah. other way. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. These are the people who used to be dentists. Uh huh. Yeah, the, yeah. Diaclone. I mean, I've known I, I know people that are Diaclone collectors, and it's like for the amount of the amount of time and effort and research they do looking for the figures i got nothing but respect for them mm -hmm. i couldn't do it even if i had the money it's too much to keep track of well okay so like and one particular example that i can think of is maz who we all know from um you know his tf1 blog he's on twitter for as long as that lasts but like you know mm. He was on this like mission to find and document all of these unusual like Diaclone variants, the European equivalents, like all of that stuff to, you know, have good photos out there, solid, reliable information. Like, yeah, there is there is that dedicated following for Diaclone and its derivatives like that. You need money. You need a special kind of determination. There's not a lot of those people, but like I am certainly glad that they're out there. Um, all right, let's move on before, uh, you know, Brian gives himself an aneurysm screaming in his head to stop talking about this already when he's listening to the show for editing later. <laughs> um, so over the weekend, we had the show Bible for EarthSpark leak as a, like, big batch of Paramount uh, documents that somehow uh, went out to public access. Like, 500 gigabytes worth of internal Paramount documents got spread out to the internet through some means or another, and among them was EarthSpark's Bible. Um, so this is very much like an early treatment Bible. Um, it does not have, like, really, like, nitty-gritty information in it, anything we don't really already know about the show just from having watched it. Um, this is basically what they would circulate to um, 
writers that they invite to submit scripts for the show so that they have the like right understanding of what the show is about and who the characters are but not so much that like they don't have freedom to explore their own concepts within that um what i think is really interesting about this is just to see like what the show felt like during its earlier stages of development before it really went to animation uh because there is some little differences here and there in like names and concepts and things and there's also a lot of like uh concept art for characters uh some of whom look fairly different from what actually came about in the 3d animation um so there's a link to a pdf uh on the tfw boards uh you can find that via our show notes for this episode uh tfradio.net 838 for as long as that stays available uh, there's no telling if that's going to get pulled down at some point. The fact that it stayed up for several days already without probably means like nobody's really paying that much attention to it. So go grab it while you can. It's always interesting to have those kind of documents around. I actually have something similar to this for Star Trek Voyager um, that I bought uh, on eBay directly from Christy Marks, um, who some people may recognize as a fairly prolific uh, TV writer from the 80s and early 90s. So she received one of those at some point from Paramount and much later on sold it along with a lot of other stuff. And uh, it's much the same thing. Like the basic concept of the show is already there, but like there's just like they interpreted characters different once they actually like got into producing the show and casting the roles. So like it's an interesting thing to have around as like uh, memorabilia kind of stuff. It's not so much like you're learning deep secrets about this that nobody's ever heard before. It, it's all pretty much out there already anyway. Um, so Diecast might be interested in this next one. Uh, the Funko and Loungefly SDCC exclusive. So uh, if Diecast wants two more Transformers Funko Pops. Are these are, are these forget. we're gonna have to do by uh uh what what are those uh by lottery? Yeah, the lottery with the um Oh with the NFTs? NFT, yeah. Uh. I I'm not sure if it's gonna be that bad. Um so the Funko Pops are uh Toy Deco Rodimus Prime and Galvatron, which like setting aside any feelings about Funko Pops as a concept, like the colors, the decos on these don't look bad. They no. saw the, you know, black lifeless Funko Pop eyes, but that's, you know, just kind of par for the course. You know what's sad is it, it says they're $30, so if I have the, that's $15 a piece. If I have the chance to pick this up for $30 because it's Transformers, I will. And I don't even <laughs> want to. Like, I don't want to, but yeah, I'll, I'll buy it. <laughs> uh, the thing... I'm... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I tend to be kind of critical of Funko Pops in general, but in terms of sculpt, I'm actually pretty impressed by this because, yeah, there are definitely, you know, a lot of toy details, especially yeah. in Rodham's Prime. And, of course, Galvatron's head is just purely the toy, except for the, you know, lifeless eyes. But Right. I hope, man, it would be nice if they molded the uh, lifeless eyes in, like, clear yellow so you could put a light in there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure they didn't, but that would be cool. Right. Funko that Pops, was... now with light piping. <laughs> I mean, that would be the next step if there is a next step. Yeah. Yeah, Funkos feel like they're starting to go the way of Twitter, but, you know. The thing that I thought was more interesting, and I was actually hoping Brian would be here to talk about this, because it seems like it's kind of up his alley a little bit, or at least used to be. It's a thing he'd be interested in, is um, the Loungefly stuff, which is a Soundwave-themed backpack and a set of pins that are Soundwave and four of his cassettes. Oh, that is really clever. Yeah. Unfortunately, the pin set, if I'm reading that box correctly, is limited to 500 pieces. Oh, Ooh. geez. So those will all be gone. Yeah. It's not a bad price, too. 20 bucks for a six or five five pin set, six yeah. pin set. That, that's... No, I thought that was very reasonable, much more so than the $125 backpack. Yeah, and yeah. it's Just... a mini backpack. It's not even yeah. a full-size backpack. So that's that, for me, is... I would not get that, but the pin set is nice. Yeah, yeah. For, for people who are not the, who are not watching this, who are listening, um, what the pin set is, is it is a larger pin of Soundwave in Walkman mode that you get separate pins of his cassettes to uh, put in the cassette door spot on the tape player. It's really neat. 
Yeah, I and really I'm, like it. Yeah, and I'm betting that uh, pin number six, which is not visible in the packaging, is going to be the plain cassette door. Oh, that would make sense. Yeah, and that would explain why they don't have it visible in the package, because, like... Not that's terribly most... exciting, but... Yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty boring just by itself. <laughs> yeah, but I, as a concept, I really do like these. This is neat. Yeah, like, if this was not an SDCC limited thing... I would seriously, seriously consider buying this for $20. Like, this is, yeah. it looks really nice. It's a really cool concept. But, you know, locked behind 500 pieces and SDCC and, like, XV has a sad. <laughs> That's our episode title, by the way. I'm putting that in right now. Okay. <laughs> Until Brian hears something else in here and overrides it, which happens sometimes. All right. Um,. We have uh, in-hand images of the Buzzworthy Bumblebee Shuttle Massacre set. Uh, that's not the official name of it, but that's what I'm calling it now and forever. Fair. Uh, I, so I approve. This that's is, a good name. This is from a video review of the set, but it gives us a lot of like up-close looks at the um, new Prowl face sculpt, a uh, better look at the damage detailing on the figures. Um like, I mean, there's not a ton of new information to be had about this, but, like, it's our it's the best look we've had yet at this. Um, I would assume we're going to see these show up in stores probably within just a matter of weeks at this point. You know, they're produced, the packaging's all there and everything. They're just kind of, like, waiting for a rollout here. Um, and by the same token, it probably is not going to be long before that um, Troop Builder multi-pack comes out, too, and many of us will face financial ruin. Hmm. <laughs> Matt that, is nodding his head knowingly. That's more accurate than I would care to uh, admit. Yes. Uh, for for some of our Discord members too, tfradio.net slash discord. Yeah, I, I'm I'm pleased that I think a lot of people are having some restraint on that one, just going for one at full price. But that is certainly not true of everyone. It's true of me though. I'm I'm waiting for the discount for the extras. But yeah, um, shuttle masker set cool that it exists i guess not for me just makes uh, me sad that the the toys don't have you know undamaged parts uh for you know normal display yeah i do like that the uh studio series backdrop is the shuttle with a hole blown inside of it yeah oh yeah yeah i i feel like studio series more often than not does really well with the choice of backdrops for any given release some of them might be a little bit bland, but like a lot of them are very appropriate and like uh, you know well positioned for uh, the display. Like it felt like such a weird thing to have those backdrops in the first couple waves of Studio Series before we were used to the idea, because uh, you know they were framing it like yeah you have this backdrop now for taking pictures to put on social media and like I don't know if anybody actually ever does that but it's kind of nice for the packaging at least if you leave it in box for display like it makes a nice little extra for that at the very least and they've gotten really good at uh setting those up oh optimus p123 is calling it the instruments of destruction set which is also pretty good yeah uh the heroic nonsense set would have been a good name yeah yes. yeah yeah okay so the um the ratchet and brawn that were hyped uh, hy hypothesizing that will come next year. We can call that the Instruments of Destruction set. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Black Knife, our old friend Carl, suggests they talk about boring Daniel set. I think it's talk about dull, or talk about dull uh, is the line, but I think yes, he's pitching is. a, you know, Hot Rod and Daniel go fishing set. Which, yeah, talk about dull. Yeah, I mean, that would be a chance to get the uh, Studio Series Hot Rod in those nice uh, movie reissue colors. So, Oh, oh yeah. Damn. Oh, damn you. Now I want that to exist. <laughs> yeah, thank, thanks, Rob. Yeah. Rob, why do you have to ruin everything? <laughs> it's a habit. <laughs> uh, all right, what else do we have? Oh, our first look at the retro reissue kickback box. Not the toy itself, unfortunately, but the box, which, you know, it's the same style and very nice box art on that. I'm afraid to even ask what the price is going to be on this, because it's like, 
I look at Hound, I look at Starscream, and they're thirty five dollars. Yeah, I look at Kickback, and it's like I'm not paying thirty five dollars for a Kickback in a box. Did I you will pay thirty five dollars for Hound because he's smaller than a scale yeah. I, toy. I did because I was it, everything went up at one time at Pulse, and I kind of was like on my break. So I, I I got everything while I was on my break while I had a few minutes and I meant just to go like back. you'll do with this kickback. No, so I don't. I would like to call your attention back um, about ten years to the the platinum edition toys, where there was a three pack of the Insecticons and the SRP on that was about eighty dollars. Yeah, don't don't remind me of that. That was <laughs> that was ridiculous back then. Yeah, that was eighty dollars in twenty fourteen money. So $35 a piece for single Insecticons today actually is about right, and if not, a little bit low. I'm yeah. actually, I'm honestly surprised that the Seekers were being sold by Walmart in this retro edition for $35 each. I am genuinely surprised by that because when the same molds were sold by Toys R Us in the commemorative series in 2004 or three, whichever, I believe even then they were priced at $35 each, them and the Autobot cars. That sounds right. Yeah. So, like, if anything, you would expect the Seekers at this point to be like 50 from yeah. Walmart. Yeah. Um, I mean, Kickback is Kickback was the first Insecticon I ever bought. And he is so closely tied with Shrap, was my favorite. It, it, it depends on what day you ask me of which of the two I like mm -hmm. the best. Bombshell's kind of just over there doing his own thing. But, um, I just can't see paying if, if he's 20, if he's a lower price point, but I can't imagine it being its own price point in this capsule because there's yeah. no, there's nothing else that it could be slotted into the same spot. And they would have to make a new price point slot if it wasn't 35. And it's like, I'll wait for a clearance. I'm, I just can't pay $35. I don't want to pay $35 for an Insecticon. Well, do you will, and you'll do it three times, Don. Yep. I do want to <laughs> see this, though, uh, because I think the original kickback mold could look pretty good with, uh, uh, with you know, a nice opaque uh, yellow uh, chest plate and even painted silver wings. I, it could it could end up looking pretty nice. Yeah, I'm, I am genuinely curious what the final deco on this is going to look like, because, like, there are extreme steps that you can take to make it look more like a cartoon, but, like... The Insecticons, there's not a ton you can really do with them just with like little detail work like um on Starscream. Yeah. Also yeah, I did I... I just did a little bit of searching on that site just for you know academic purposes as much as anything. Yeah. Um the price listed it of course will not be the US price. Uh, it is listed at 45 euros, which translates to $48. But mm -hmm. the important part is uh, they have Hound and Thundercracker, and those are each about five euros more. So this may end up being just a little bit cheaper than the previous movie figures we've seen. Maybe. I mean, at the same time, though, the wholesale price might be a little bit lower on that. But Walmart probably would keep a constant price point just to, you know, keep using the one shelf space they already have set up and not add something new to the skew yeah. and i just mentioned in our discord you know with it being a walmart capsule item like soundwave was for netflix it's very possible if those are people that want a diaclone recolor set it'll be a while before we get it or we'll get it in legacy molds not these class not these g1 molds i kind of, i was kind of always figuring if we saw a set of diaclone uh insecticons we'd see those on legacy molds just because yeah that's where um you know modern molds have been where almost all the other diaclone stuff has happened so mm -hmm. but i think they'll go the route of deluxe insecticons before they even yeah. attempt any of that yeah, yeah. The, the the diaclone colors will be pretty well farther down the list i think I think Japan will see the Diaclone from the G1s long before we do. If if it was still Legends days, I would agree with you. At this point, though, like, anything kind of goes. Um, and I will also point out that Mark, I think, on the last stream, basically stated his intention to, like, have a cartoon color bombshell at the first chance he has to do that. So, like, 
probably even before a deluxe Insecticon, that's what he wants, you know, out of a recolor of these molds. You know, here's the thing. What I'm thinking, would it not fit pretty well if they line up doing deluxe Insecticons to put it in the buzzworthy, buzzworthy capsule? Because they've done that before. Again, if, if it's Yeah, that's mul- how we got Ransack. I could totally see yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 Chop Shop yeah. showing up the same way. Exactly. I just uh, It would just be spaced out over three other sets, assuming one deluxe Insecticon per set. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so, Don, this one's for you. It's a statue that you're going to have to buy. No, I'm not. <laughs> yes, you do. You're obligated. No. This is this is a uh, very nice looking, I think, cell shaded Optimus Prime statue uh, from Numskull. Numskull does not sell these directly themselves. I believe the price point on this, though, from the uh, retailers that carry it, is around one hundred and fifty dollars. Better than I expected, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Now um, I will. Oh, go ahead, Rob. BBTS has it for one seventy-five for the record. Okay. I'll be honest. I think it looks good. However, I have the pop culture shock animated cell cell shaded Optimus, which I, let me get it. I have it right here, as a matter of fact. But Don, of course, you always need more. Like you can't just have one cell shaded Optimus Prime. Now, see a cell shaded Optimus Prime statue. I think that would be up more up diecast Sally because he does love his cell shading. Hmm. I mean, I've always attributed that more to be a Don thing, personally. I'm not a I'm not a statue guy, though. Uh, yeah. There's only yeah. one statue that I ever seen that I would but buy. Th- but this one is cell shaded. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even that one that Don's holding, I I had no interest in. Well, it does this look nice, is, though. Yeah, this is the pop culture shock one that came out about two, maybe three years ago. Uh, it's cell shaded, and this one. Oh, it's got a spare arm with the uh, Energon Axe. Right. So, yeah. So, this one. It, he it, really shouldn't be running with that. Exactly. No. But see, well, the re- No, it's fine. It's not scissors. <laughs> but uh, this also, when it came out, again, this is two to three years ago, was retailed at 159 mm-hmm. Uh So, and the thing is, the, as far as I can tell, the Numskull does not have a weapon, does not have any interchangeability. It's just what you see there. And yes, it looks very good, but it doesn't look good enough for me to add to or replace this one because I do have the extra part. And I do have what I think is a better uh, cell shading. It's a little more subtle to me. And if you look at the end of the G1 credits, when Optimus Prime is transforming uh, in the background, it, this thing actually picks up from when he starts running with his gun in hand. Mm-hmm. So it's so close to like the like him jumping off the screen to me. I don't want anything to replace this. This is exactly what I want in this kind of statue. I also feel like the blue on the new statue is a little bit too light, and yours is probably more accurate to the model from what I'm seeing on camera. For myself, I'm fine with anime eyebrow truck just because that was a lot cheaper than either statue. <laughs> If I had ever seen that go on clearance like the Megatron did, I would have bought the the Siege and uh, the Siege cell shaded uh, Optimus Prime. Oh yeah, because that actually looked really nice. I just didn't want to pay thirty five dollars for it, which is what those anniversary figures were going for, even when the Voyagers themselves were just bumping up against thirty. Yeah. But fine, fine. Don's ruined all my fun, and then Brian ruined my fun too. Because the next item we have, I titled. Brian has to buy the Super Shogun Megatron. Um, we talked about this briefly uh, before when it popped up on Super 7's Instagram account. They have a product page for it now. And the the fun in this for me is that it's priced at $435 and we needed to try to talk Brian into buying it. But, you know, Brian's not here, so I don't get to have any fun getting to irresponsibly <laughs> spend his money. It's two foot tall. With, it's yeah. a Super Shogun, yeah. With roller skates. And yes, a rocket is, fist. Yeah. Uh, the rocket fist was not standard on the jumbo machiner molds that uh, Shogun Warriors used. Uh, matter of fact, like the rocket punch for Great Mazinger was like a, an accessory set that was sold separately. But uh, yeah, they were all, you know, two feet tall, hollow plastic. They all had wheels on their feet. They fall over so easily. <laughs> like, I, the only reason I, I well, know. Well, so this do is, I when I put roller skates on. 
well yeah same but yeah uh, my brother found a couple of these for me at like a thrift store for my 16th birthday so i you know i've I've had these, I've had things like this a while and I love the idea, but I cannot pay $400. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's sort of, icon- it's sort of weird because you give Megatron a shooting fist, but it's kind of like Godzilla. And we all remember Godzilla's famous shooting fist from the movies as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it really, it really, of course you could say it fell off because of cosmic rust, but that's, that's a heavy price tag. Godzilla got cosmic rust. No, me, uh, mega. You can say that Megatron. You know, his oh, wrist. Yeah, okay. yeah, Megatron. Got, yeah. No, it's just I was just saying. I guess it's, that makes it's, a little more sense. Yeah, yeah it's just sort of yeah. weird. Megatron having the shooting fist, which is the super, which is the Super Shogun aesthetic, but also Godzilla got it as well. So it's like, yeah. I God's, mean, you say all that, but it just makes me like I wish Megatron had rocket fists in the cartoon. Yes. Like, what's not improved with a rocket punch? Mm-hmm. You can't tell me I'm wrong. Oh no! Oh yeah, Black Knight is suggesting Becca Godzilla got cosmic rust. That yeah. would also make a little more sense. Oh yeah, that that also reminds me. Semi off topic, but I think Don might appreciate this. Um, uh, Discotech did just announce Mazinger Z on Blu-ray coming later this year. So believe it or not, I've never, I've never been a Mazinger fan. I've, I've, I actually have more fond memories of Transor Z. Which I know is which I know is a, no, that's a, a slap in the face. So that that's how I how was. Do I, you know, but... that's how you know because it's the theme song. It's oh, that, the that theme, theme song. song. Yeah, that theme song was catchy as heck. But yeah, just I the odds of like ever getting like a good high end release of Transor Z very low. But Mazinger Z uh, they're going to do, and I'm probably going to try and get it. I keep hoping they'll bring over one of the masterpiece grade Mazinger Zs and a Transor Z packaging. It's like. Oh, that would be cool. It would be like so cool, and it'd be like, I, yeah, I, I would get that. I'll be honest. What I really want is I just want a Mazinger Z figure that is not several hundred dollars like this Megatron, just to sort of ease us back <laughs> on mean, topic. Well, yeah, this, well, <laughs> well Brian, are Duke, well, expensive. Yeah, Rob, do yeah. they have like an MDLX version over there with uh, like what we're getting with the Optimus and the uh, and the upcoming Rodimus and stuff? Uh, I don't quite get uh, get what you're going for there. Oh, well, you know the the three zero seventy nine eighty dollar the Optimus. Are you asking if three zero is doing Bazinger stuff? No, I'm saying no. I'm saying is there like an equivalent line that has the high posability with some of the features like what three zero does for Transformers? The you know, closest we ever got was uh, some Super Robot Chogokin uh, figures, which are not you know Soul of Chogokin, so they were a little bit cheaper but also they had most of their parts like shunted to separate accessory packs so the savings was not all that much in the long yeah time. but yeah no, right. there's just there's there's no cheap Mazinger z figures that are really worth getting that's my opinion anyway all right um well on that note let's uh shift over to what we got this week john are you there i sure am what have you I bought can... lately Street Fighter Six. Uh, I did. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. So that hasn't changed. Uh, let's see here on Transformer front. Um, so I got um, I got DevCon. I got Axel Grease. I haven't gotten to DevCon yet, but I did open Axel Grease, and uh, she's great. Great color scheme. Um, fun. Fun bold. Really good. Uh, John, we're having uh, we're having some issues with your audio i'm not sure uh, okay let me reconnect let me reconnect. all right all right skip me for a minute and i'll be back uh rob okay um i got uh i got my new glasses which keep sliding down my nose but otherwise are working very well i think some super glue will fix that uh some of the little foam pad uh, nose pad things that i uh have coming in from amazon by friday um i also got um okay so I got, I, you probably remember, Chris, I used to collect like Japanese reference books to various like early anime Gundam, things like that. Yeah. I uh, finally found the one, the Roman album for the Edeon movies for only 20 bucks on eBay. So, Interesting. Yeah. So un- I got that. There's some really nice illustrations in there. Unfortunately, unlike the Gundam ones, it doesn't have like, you know, really kind of janky napkin sketches that Tomino did for some of the robots. <laughs> oh 
but I I still don't regret it. That's a that's a it's a really nice book, and it's just it's nice to uh, pick that up again after so long. So. Uh, the other thing I got was I got the high grade Hazel Custom, which I pre ordered from Big Bad Toy Store about a year and a half ago. Went into my pile of loot and sat there since they won't let you put sale items uh, combined for shipping with your pile of loot stuff. So it finally ran out of time and wound its way to me. And that is in terms of like just not like really tedious practical things. I think that's everything I got this week. Uh, John, are you ready to try again? Okay, we'll take that as a no and go to Matt. Okay. So, oh, wait, John is connected to audio. <laughs> okay, we have two John DeLunas. It's, a, it's an Excellent. embarrassment of riches. Yeah, you got two for the price of one. Does it sound better? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, well, I got, um, like I mentioned, I got DevCon and Axel Grease. Didn't get... To DevCon yet, uh, did get to Axel Grease, and she's great. So great colors, like very Decepticon y colors, and her head sculpt's really good too. So very interesting, um, like an exposed brain kind of thing going on there with her, um, and uh, big anime eyes, and uh, yeah, you know, so she's she's really cool. Um, so two thumbs up for her. Uh, very mixed uh mixed thumbs if that's a thing for uh train bot number four which came in last week so i'm so sorry yeah, guys yeah it, it's a sunk cost thing going on here right now with them so um i will i will say that the train bots continue to like be really good individual robots and transformers but they have a combined mode that i'm dreading uh the day uh that comes <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, it could be worse, right? They could be bad individual Transformers, which they're really not. Um, but yeah, I should have bailed <laughs> at like uh, at Train Trainbot One, maybe after one strike. But uh, I'm, I'm four down with two to go. Um, you know what? Like I said, uh, it's it's really weird to get uh, you know this uh, group of six that look really good you know they they are, are are very respectable transformers on their own i really like when i get a masterpiece um you know i don't i don't really collect consistently masterpiece uh transformers but when i do get them and they still look like a toy um i really respect that so i appreciate um even though they have they have master uh, uh masterpiece engineering uh sometimes that it's worse um it's still like it's still they still translate well as like oh this is like a toy-ish toyetic robot so i appreciate that and and i do think that so far uh that the first four train bots um have a nice aesthetic um it's just that they're going to make a very terrible combiner robot uh that i'm going to be compelled to spend like two hours uh assembling <laughs> at some point so um I'm going to try to delay that uh, as, uh, as much as possible. But uh, yeah, as far as Transformers go, those are my three big uh, purchases in the last couple of weeks or deliveries in the last couple of weeks. Really like Axle Grease. Can't, uh, can't recommend that enough. And uh, it, it also continues to be really weird that, you know, Hasbro is like firmly in this uh, era of we only do stuff that's been done before. Like, you know, don't talk to us if, if it's not um, – referencing something else uh that they continue to do like really creative junkions in multiple like price points and sizes it's really weird like like it shows that they can be creative if they i don't know weren't so scared to do it um and she's she's really successful so i'm really happy with her yeah i personally would really love to see like what a toy line basically beast wars today like where every new co every concept in it is brand new just the designer's creativity showing through. I would love to see what that would look like for a year without any like 1984 callbacks. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, don't be scared, guys. Uh, it's okay. You can you can make new Transformers. You can you can do it. Before uh, we move on, yes. I just I just want to ask the question I usually ask when John's here. Uh, any fun new like uh, toy catalogs oh, or yes. production materials or anything lately? Oh yeah, that's a good question. Um, 
Uh, not not exactly. Uh, so I haven't gotten any new um, uh, tour fair catalogs or literature or anything like that uh, recently. I did. That did remind me. I did go to um, a GI Joe collectors convention two weekends ago, and uh, shook the hand of Mr. Ron Rudat, which was fun. Nice. And um, picked up a couple of uh, pieces from him, and uh, you know he put his signature on those bad boys. And so that is a piece of toy history uh, to be in the presence of uh, Ron Rudat. And if anyone's not familiar with him, he did. Uh, quite a bit of G.I. Joe um, packaging artwork uh, back in the day, specifically like character artwork. I and believe, so, yeah, he, he's a piece of history. I believe he's also the person that designed the Cobra logo. Uh, I didn't know that, but if he did that, I awesome. think so. Yeah. Well, he's, he's definitely a part of G.I. Joe history. Uh, I'm not, I'm not dating him. Sorry, Ron, I'm not calling you old, <laughs> but, uh, but, but uh, he has quite a resume. And so it was really cool to be, in the presence of some toy history there. Cool. Okay, Matt, we were trying to go to you. Yeah. Okay, see, John, I've got the, uh, the, the solution to your train bot problem. Since you like the way they look in individual modes, you can just buy the diaclone versions that's been hinted and put that in combined mode and, and, and keep mm. the individuals in robot mode. Okay. I'll have to think about that. I'll have to, I'll have to <laughs> consult with my checking account. <laughs> okay but uh so what i got this week i got uh from toku collectibles i got the shoto super gosei sentai Dai ranger team oh the one, assholes yes one of my favorite <laughs> favorite sentais one of the the great 90s sentais yes they are just absolutely horrible people and <laughs> got like the i love the suits they're they're simple but but attractive suits and uh like they've got more one of the more ornate helmet designs for the team. And it's just a really good show. I love it. I can't wait for Di the Die Reno uh, super mini plot. Um, Transformers wise, uh, I'm a little less excited about this. I picked these up today. Uh, I got the, uh, what is the, the Wardon two pack? I can't remember the exact name of it, but I got um, Die On and Ariel. Yeah, okay. Um, Die On falls apart quite easily i just i just touched him for the benefit of those with uh video i just touched him and his arm fell off uh it's not the newly molded parts either it's the parts that have been rerun from the cup mold which i believe this is like the fourth time it's been run through because i took the new parts and put them on the orion pax body and they hold just fine but if you put um, them on die on the die on torso the one arm just you only stays on if you put it on there in exact way and even then it's very tenuous does pax's arm stay on 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 dion no okay no none of the arms will stay on the dion torso okay, okay well so, that's unfortunate yes yeah though it sounds like if you have a little bit of like you know plumber's thread seal tape to wrap around that peg it might help yeah maybe yeah, yeah he's uh either that or some uh, floor polish mm -hmm. treatment Mm -hmm. yeah he's gonna require something i mean other than that i really like all the the way all the remolding came out like mm -hmm. it it's a, it's a good looking toy but because of the way his limbs won't stay on transformation is a freaking nightmare oh yeah like i successfully got him into truck mode but just um the way the hands hold on to the little pegs underneath the truck bed will pull the arms off of off of the the shoulder pegs uh, that's unfortunate yeah, yeah on not, the plus side you know dion is destined to be a casualty anyway so it's it's fine if his limbs go flying off somewhere yes this is another uh two pack of corpses that we could have in our future um ariel i've never been the biggest fan of this uh this mold to begin with uh i skipped the prime rc to begin with uh the only one i had was road rocket and it's always felt flimsy i guess because of the uh unpaintable plastic they've used like they used a lot of it in this mold in particular so she doesn't feel any worse than road rocket did to me mm. 
Um, I do like the remolding for the front of her motorcycle. The motorcycle mold holds together really well. So she is the better figure out of the two. And uh, nice face sculpt on her. Uh, her ponytail actually does, is a separate piece from the rest of the head sculpt. Uh, I don't think it's supposed to pull off, but, but mine does. And it pulls off, of course, because it has a stress mark on it. <laughs> on the peg that holds it in place. And also, Dion's head has a stress mark on the uh, base of the neck. So that's probably not going to... I want to say one of my cups had, had that too, but has not yet broken, thank goodness. Knock wood and such. I'll check Buzzworthy cup. I have that. Uh, I have that. Hand. Yeah. So, like, I'm not going to be transforming them a whole lot. They're going to go up with Orion Pax and Alpha Trion and Vector Sigma and, like, be more of a display piece as opposed to fiddle toys. So, just as far as, like, having them on the shelf to look at, they're great. But the quality control on these is not the best I've ever experienced. Moving along to a good toy that I am supremely happy with. I also got Studio Series 86 Snarl. Ooh. The best Dinobot. Yeah, he, he's good, isn't he? He is so amazing. Uh, like, Don praised this thing up and down whenever he got his. And I don't think he did it justice. Like, it is just <laughs> a really good toy. The... the um, molded gold plastic versus the gold paint is really not all that uh, distracting in hand. I was expecting like a noticeable difference, but it, it's not that bad in person. Uh, transformation is spectacular. Um, the Dinobot head in robot mode seamlessly blends in with the inside of the legs. Like I was, I was blown away by it. So this like a plus hasbro thank you for getting the best dinobot right yeah i'm i as i as i said when i got mine from cmd store i was so worried about another in, like with sludge sludge is my favorite dinobot he was my first transformer ever and that studio series sludge was just such a letdown on so many facets and this snarl is just exquisite exquisite yeah that's a good word for it. matt where'd you get him from uh cmd store Oh, okay. Same place I got Ariel and um, Don oh, yeah. from. We were talking about this last week, Diecast. I believe Diecast might have been the one that put the, the link in the notes for him. Yeah, I, I yeah. Like that, I feel like that was probably the case, yeah. I didn't realize they had uh, Snarl, too. Yeah, I, I, I think we mentioned that, too. <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to pass on Ariel and Don because I didn't want to pay the extra shipping, and then Kilby's like, oh, they have Snarl, too. So, <laughs> curse you, Brian Kilby. Yeah, I mean that only add, that only would have added like five dollars to the shipping, I think. It didn't add anything to the shipping. Oh, okay, nice. So it made it made the shipping worth it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, but that's it for me this week. I think when I was uh, looking at that, deciding if I wanted to get those two toys, there actually was a little bit of an extra shipping charge adding uh, Snarl to the cart. But I'm also farther away from their shipping point than you are, uh, so that probably makes the difference. Yes, now I have to find Dion's arm that fell off, so continue, please. <laughs> Diecast. Oh, I also got a Dion that if you look at him funny, his arm falls off. Oh, dear. Oh, yep, so, same one, too. Yep. Um, so How's I, the other arm? The other arm is not as bad. Uh, huh. it, it's yes, just, not as bad. Yeah, not yeah. as bad, but it's it's not great. Um, you know, some people were having this problem with Alpha Trion. Alpha Trion. No, I'm sorry. Orion Pax. Pax yeah. And uh, I didn't have any issues with my Orion Pax, so I was pretty lucky. But uh, apparently this may be a more <laughs> widespread issue on uh, Dion. Um, so he's, he's not great. And I didn't even try and transform him yet. Um, I do like his coloring. I like all that stuff. Um, but yeah, they need to stop using this mold. Uh, this needs to go the way it needs some rehab. Yeah. Either the the torso definitely needs some rehab. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, It's just, or just redesign it. 
and and make it so the arms pop on almost like a build a figure. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That way, like you physically need to rip them apart if you want to, um, but it won't damage the toy. Uh, my Ariel, I guess that's how you say it. Um, her face was chipped, so I did use a pen to fix that, and now it looks better. Mm -hmm. Um, so I had to pull her whole head apart basically to do it. Um. Yeah, it, it's very, it feels very delicate, um, which is not what I'm used to with my Transformers. So What toy line have you been buying for the last five years? Oh, well, mm. I mean, you know, this is definitely uh, the probably one of the most delicate Transformers I've dealt with. Um, just the waist is really weird on it, uh, and... You know, like Matt said, it may be this particular design uh, and this mold. This is the first time I've actually messed with a figure of this mold. So, I haven't even transformed her yet. Uh, I, I was I was waiting to talk about her on the show or maybe do a review. I'm not sure. Usually when I get figures in the mail and I'm excited to get them and then I open them up and I'm like, ah, oh, they're kind of not what I thought. I tend to put off reviewing them. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I thought was really weird, and I don't know if you had the same experience, Matt, but even the packaging felt very thin and cheap, uh, which is... It's just of a thinner quality than what we normally get. So even the box, like I was like, man, is there anything in this box? It's I, like I didn't I didn't notice anything specifically because uh quite frankly, Studio Series Snarl's packaging feels a little flimsy too. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it was a it lot was of it's like that now. Thin. Uh but I also got Dion or or uh Devcon. Devcon, which he is Really nice. Uh, I think Matt talked about him last week, too. Yes. Uh, I love the colors. I love the robot mode. Uh, you know, he's got extra rocket boosters. He He's just really nice. I'm happy to have him. And then I also got uh, Axel Grease, which <laughs> I have not opened yet. Uh, she's still in package for if you're not watching the video. Um, but yeah, yeah, she looks pretty good. I really love uh, her face sculpt. They they really did a good job with it. Just the huge visors and everything like that. But you can uh, you can definitely tell what they were going for with her. I, so. I'm warming up to Axel Grease like in concept, but like I if. I got that. I don't think I'd really treat her like a junkie on. No. Like I, no, I, I can't reconcile those colors with being a junkie on, and the Decepticon junkie on thing is just kind of hard for me to rationalize, too. Uh, but like, I just, agree. just as an independent character, I would be fine with that. The colors do look nice. Yeah, I, mean, um, I was thinking maybe more along the lines of like the shattered glass junkie ons that like, we got from BotCon several years ago. Yeah, the Insecticon colored ones. Yes. I mean, maybe you, maybe if you got like a mercenary faction and, and put it over the Decepticon one and make her the part of the mercenary faction. Hmm. Well, that faction symbol is terrible, though. It is. She could just be one of um, Octane's associates. That seems like a good fit. But yeah, that's all that I got. All right, Don. All righty, uh, got an uh, interesting mix this week. Um, Further falling down my rabbit hole of Joe Classified uh, and unable to grab the sides of the wall, uh, I did pick up a new figure from Valiverse, which is a line of related six-inch military figures. Uh, I got the uh, Kill Switch figure, which he's a, a Navy diver expert, so I got Kill Switch. Um, I had a partial gift card at GameStop and my it was June 30th I had my $5 reward I couldn't find anything else to buy they didn't have a pack of D-cell batteries that I wanted 
If, Does so anyone I'll, sell diesel batteries anymore? Yeah, but oh, yeah. N- that GameStop had nothing I wanted. I was gonna I was gonna be out my five dollars plus whatever I had left on the gift card, which by itself wasn't that much. So I got Falcon. I'm hoping the head sculpt isn't as bad as everyone says it is, but oh, it probably is. Yeah, but I got Falcon. Uh, that was just you know why not? And then today I got one of the best Joes in the world, Bazooka. Excellent. Yeah, this is the the regular version with the red shirt. I've got the Tiger Force version, uh, but this is the bazooka that you know I've always liked bazooka. Uh, Transformer wise, I had a birthday offer from Target for an extra percentage off. I had a little bit left on a gift card from there, uh, so I picked up Studio Series One Hundred Bumblebee. Hmm. So I'm from Rise of the Beast, so I'm hoping this is the last Bumblebee. I ever buy. Don, I hate to ruin this for you already. Is it the version with the fixed face paint or is it the first run? Actually, I have I completely forgot about that when I was I just saw it and thought, hey, that's a good thing. Um I'll hold it up. Maybe you can tell me. Um, I do not. What's wrong with the face paint on the first one? It's so they did a running change on it, adding like more paint and detail on the face. Uh, unfortunately, Don's webcam is not good enough for me to really be able to tell one way or the other. I'll try to put on. I'll try to put on Twitter after the show. Maybe you can look at it then. Um, I also got in the other day, Beachcomber. Looking forward to opening him up. Nice. And I got in probably. I'm not going to call him Deluxe of the Year, but he's very close to being Deluxe of the Year, and that's Defcon. Yeah, I kind of figured that's where that was going. Well, because <laughs> the blue is right, the face sculpt is right, the look is right. This is this is the character that they have never gotten as close to G1 animation as this one. And it's from the blur mold. And it works so well. This is this is the figure I've been wanting for a very long time, and I love it. I got two of them, so I'm happy with that. I was even surprised, too, when I think it was somebody in our Discord posted the screenshot of DevCon's vehicle mode, and, like, it even has the this video cells brought to you on the outside Squarespace. vehicle mode that just look like the arms of that toy Available on there. Like, Except it's amazing how well stand. that fits for how yep. that blur was already engineered. Laugh out loud. Exactly. I mean, it's just, That's and I, I think what sells okay, it for so. me Plan. It's Doing the blue. Robot mode first. The blue and the red are what, gray. in my Question head, they're supposed to be. I haven't, I haven't compared like screenshots and stuff like that. Put some yellow shit. Um, so there's that. Before you continue on, uh, John put in our Discord side by sides of the two versions of Bumblebee. Uh, so you can actually settle this mystery for us right now. If you still got your uh, Studio Series 100 in in uh, arm's length there. Because everybody needs to know, did you get the good version or the first version? By everyone, I mean me. <laughs> For those watching video, Don is just like absolutely like glowing with the uh, the light <laughs> he's trying to compare those toys. Uh, <laughs> just look around the eyes, Don. Surround the eyes. Yeah, I think you probably got the good one from what it looked like on the ca- uh, on camera, but that's just my guess. I yeah, I was yeah, it, yeah, it that. looks like it looks like it's the good one. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got the good one. Hooray! And the la- and the last two things I got was again I got the Dion and Ariel set from CM from CMD store. Um, again, I basically I paid I paid extra for shipping, but now I don't have to worry about it come SDCC time. Apparently, I shouldn't have been worrying about it in the first place with the QC issues, but that will make a nice shelf. And the last thing I got is the thing I wasn't wanting to get, which was minor Megatron and Senator Ratbat. Rat Senator Ratbat, because I for either I forgot about the Amazon thing, I didn't curate my pre-orders like I thought I did, so I thought I got Shockwave and Orion Pax. So I ordered Senator Ratbat and minor megatron on amazon a while ago and hopefully i'll get the one i want i will say looking at the box they look a lot better at least on the box than i was than i thought they would 
I really didn't want another Senator Ratbat because I think the Generations one looks really great. The uh, the one that was a minor retool of 2010 Scourge. For Red yeah, Red but Red, right? no, the minor retool was Megatron. But uh, I saw that from Paladin. I saw that from Paladin. Blame yeah, I, n- I noticed. Yeah, but <laughs> looking at them in person, I think I may keep this. Now, if I get if they somehow wind up fixing it before I get the other one and I have a second one, I'll probably sell it. But yeah, there's there's that. Um, other than that, that's all I got this week. We were talking about it before the show, and I just wanted to repeat my joke because I thought it was a pretty good one that I think it's funny that they've done Siege Megatron so many times they actually have to Trojan horse them into your house now. <laughs> Don's not even listening at this point. No, I am. No, I, no, I, I agree. It's just the only after I bought Siege and saw Earthrise was basically 85 to 90 percent the same mold, I said. I do not need this mold again. Then they did the cell shaded. And I mm-hmm. thought, that looks really good. I'll pick it up. And that's it. Then they did G2. Gotta have G2. Gotta have the G2 look. I said, now I'm done. And it's like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> for me, uh, for me, I managed to uh, just get Siege G2 and Combat Hero Megatron, the first generation select. Yeah, I've got him too. Same. It, because it's that, it's, it's, it's that Tiger Stripe Megatron that was not released. Yeah, and it's that nice head sculpt that is now, you know, correctly on that minor Megatron. So, Okay, so I got Siege Megatron. I got one really early. In fact, I think I was the first one on the show to talk about it when that was coming out. Um, I also got the. Net, the first Netflix one that came with the Target Masters, which is the most awful story from any of us, because I literally did buy that just for the Target Masters, because one of them was for um, um, Ironhide Redeco, help out. Uh, crosshairs? Yes, Crosshairs, thank you. My brain was trying to say cross-cut, and I knew that was wrong. I could not come up with Crosshairs, but yeah, I, I literally did buy that just because it had the Target Masters with it, so that's that's my moment of shame with that. Um, then I've got the G2 one, and I think I think I managed to only come away with three of that mold family. I did have the Shattered Glass one sitting around for a while, but I decided I didn't need that and sold it on to Vendo, I think, in our Discord, tfradio.net slash Discord. So mm-hmm. that's with a more loving home now. So I, I'm you know down to just three, but I probably am going to end up with the Minor Megatron and Ratbat two-pack uh, one way or the other. So like, <laughs> I certainly don't have like a majority of that mold family, but I have more than I should. I almost got the set with the Target Masters for uh, for Crosshairs, but luckily I dithered on it, and by the time I was ready to do it, I could not find the, that Megatron at retail or less. So I was spared by my own procrastination, as frequently happens. I've, I've been saved by that as well uh, from time to time. Matt, are you still looking for Dion's arm? Uh, yes, it appears to have been sacrificed to the toy god. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, I've, I've had that happen on occasion. In my case, it's a little more tragic because the thing that was sacrificed uh, in that way for me was... Ah, uh, found Hell, it. Oh, Hell Buzzsaw from the eHobby, I think, exclusive Galaxy Force Sound Blaster. So I lost the little accessory piece from an expensive redeco of an old toy. And even having cleared this entire room out at one point, I have never found the damn thing. Yeah, it, it bounced behind the PlayStation 3. <laughs> I've As never you do. found the missile for my first generation's Thunderwing. I mean, one day you probably will. You put the arm on the Orion Pax mold? Oh, yeah, that's solid. Perfectly fine. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if they did try to rehab those arms a little bit when they were doing the retooling for Dion and just accidentally made the pegs a little bit too narrow. Yeah, because you would think mold degradation would, if anything, make the pegs larger. Right. Yeah. I was wondering if it might be a plastic curing problem. It could be that too, yeah. Yeah, the orange might not have reacted the same way the red and the green did. Yeah, Yeah. we have seen that with recolors (laughs) where the parts fit just is not the same and it seems like the only thing that could be at fault is the coloring agent just makes it react slightly different yeah i there there's a question in fact for anybody who has a golden disc pterosaur have the red parts on that that are black on takaratomi pterosaur given you any problems 
are they loose or floppy or too tight or that is an interesting question yeah because you know i was i was wondering if maybe you know the the red pigment was giving them some kind of trouble with joint tolerances yeah um any any problems there diecast diecast is holding up a golden disc pterosaur now too looks looks like it's holding together fairly well yeah i'd say so if if the last time I handled mine is any indicator. The only problem is that the wings pop off a little too easily. Yeah, that's kind of a hit and miss problem. Like, my Golden Disc Terrasaur is pretty much fine as far as that goes. But, you know, I've had a lot of people, uh, I've seen reports of the wings almost just falling off by themselves in some cases. It's a very shallow peg. It, it really kind of is. It could hold a little bit tighter. Yeah. Um. So... What I got this week was screwed by FedEx because they were supposed to deliver my DevCon and Beachcomber today, but decided that they didn't feel like loading it onto the truck from the depot this morning. So it did not get delivered, even though today was the delivery date. So maybe tomorrow. They were all probably partying yesterday and got in a little bit later. Probably. I was complaining about this in our Discord earlier, and I'm apparently not the only one who had the this same kind of delivery date issue with FedEx. So, like, the holiday probably had a little bit to do with it. Laziness probably also had something to do with it. Uh, I, I'm The post office. I'm okay with our post office service out here. They come late in the afternoon, but the mail comes. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, FedEx, well... and UP, FedEx and UPS just, like... Yeah, I'll probably get the stuff eventually, but there's no telling if it's actually going to be like anywhere related to the date they say. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, with my post office, I should have had die on an aerial Monday mm-hmm. because the post office had it, but I live far enough off the road where they won't deliver. And instead of leaving me a note that said it was here and I could pick it up, I had to use the tracking information to oh, of find out where my stuff was. So I yeah. could have had it Monday, but I had to pick it up today. Great. Fun. <sighs> Yeah, I'm glad I'm not so rural that I have to go and collect my mail. Oh, and just for the record, uh, I was looking uh, during the show. It looks like uh, UPS may be on strike as of August 1st. So if you have the uh, privilege of selecting your shipping methods uh, for stuff, plan accordingly. Yeah. Great. I mean, if they're going on, if they're going on strike, it's probably justified. I've heard, you know. Oh, oh yes. Oh yes. All the advertisements in the '90s, like uh, working conditions at UPS, aren't that great anymore. No. All right. Um. Well, on a more cheerful note, I'd like to thank all of our patrons. Uh, the support of our Patreon makes this entire thing possible. Uh, patrons get a lot of benefits if you want to sign up, uh, including an ad-free version of the podcast. We have um, automatically inserted pre-roll and post-roll ads on the public feed. You won't get that if uh, you're getting it from the patron feed. Um, we will post the uh, week's episode of RFC a day early to the Patreon feed. Um, not 24 hours necessarily, but the day before it goes out to the public feed, it will be available to the patrons. Uh, the Patreon version has a higher bit rate, so a little bit more audio fidelity for when Diecast accidentally plays the audio from ads uh, while he's recording the show. Um, Luckily, you also I didn't pick that up. Uh, no, because that would have only gone out to the stream because of how this is set up. And thanks to the multi-track, that will not be on the public version of the podcast uh, because uh, Brian can just mute that audio channel for that little segment because Diecast wasn't talking through that. Uh, but that nicely ties into the next perk, which is unedited episodes of RFC, which is exclusive to our patrons. So if uh, there are content edits for an episode, uh, the original unedited version and the edited version will be available to the patrons where all, the public feed only gets the uh, final edited version. Uh, touch patrons can be on our History on the Fives podcast, which Rob hosts. Uh, and patrons at any level will get the History on the Fives podcast in their feed a week early. Um, if you, uh, want to become a touch patron and, uh, participate on history on the fives, uh, just, uh, you know, sign up to Patreon, then get in touch with Brian, uh, express your interest and he'll go over what you need to know and, uh, have set up to do that. Um, and then of course our touch patrons get mentioned on the show each week and are listed, uh, to view at any time at tfradio.net slash credits, which this time I actually did think ahead and load ahead of having to read them off, so I'm all good and ready to go here this time. I planned. 
So, our Touch patrons, I'd like to thank Kevin Dorsey, AJ, Eric Griffin, Tyrell Gwynn, Rick Mahurin, Ryan Bona, Emmett Sresovich, Rabbits, Hector Bones, Ness, Joey Russell, Sean Williamson, Spider Bob, Jay Klein Rye, Sean Hamilton, Jacob Owen Lutia, Sean Bratton, Jason Hiley, TJ Petrucci, Petrus. Damn it, I cannot say that right. I am so sorry, TJ. Hyper Shouta and Brock Brandt. Thank you all for being patrons and submitting yourselves for me to potentially butcher the pronunciation of your names on weeks when I have to host the show. Um, if you would also like to support the show another way, we have our Amazon affiliate link, tfradio.net slash Amazon. You can buy anything through Amazon. If you use our affiliate link, we will get a little bit of referral money sent back to us. So, like, if you're Don and for some reason you need D-cell batteries, you can get those on Amazon. And, you know, when you buy your package of 64 D-cell batteries for, I'm sure, entirely above board reasons, uh, we'll get a little bit of a kickback from that. But, you know, you can buy anything. You can buy your toilet paper. You can buy uh, macaroni and cheese powder. Uh, if they just don't give you enough in the boxes you buy at the store and you just need, like, extra, extra cheesy macaroni and cheese. Because, let's face it, we've all been there. Um, you can also get the uh, wrong set of um, either uh, Shockwave and Orion packs or Megatron and Ratbat, depending. Um, you name it, Amazon probably has it, and you might even get the thing you actually ordered. Amazing. It's not like Walmart at all where you like, pre-order the stuff and it just never comes in, right, Diecast? Absolutely. <laughs> or sometimes it's scented candles instead of toys. <laughs> Essential oils. But yes. Amazon's a little better than that, so tfradio.net slash Amazon for all of your Amazon shopping needs. You'll help keep us going, and we really appreciate it. Um, you can find um, the show and our whole back catalog at tfradio.net. The show notes for this episode are at tfradio.net slash 838. Um, if you get us through your podcast feed, you won't have seen them when you download the show. If you get through the website, of course, you've probably already been to that page because that's kind of how we publish the publish the episodes through the show notes links. Um, there's my window. <laughs> I still have to read all this off a cheat sheet, and when the windows don't cooperate, I just have to have dead air for a moment. Um, I highly recommend to anyone to join our Discord, tfradio.net slash Discord. It's a great place to hang out with like-minded fans, uh, just general nerd conversation there all the time, Transformers, Star Trek, all sorts of stuff. Um, a lot of us are really, really happy with Star Trek Strange New Worlds. The new episode drops, um, I think, at like 2 a.m. tonight for most of us in the United States. Uh, so there will definitely be some conversations about that in our spoiler channel uh, starting tomorrow. And, like, boy, this season has not disappointed at all so far. No. So good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, tfradio.net slash Discord. Uh, you can participate just like it will run in your browser you don't have to install an app or anything to your desktop and like we're really chill the flow of conversation is very very easy to uh follow along with it's not you know just like scrolling by walls of text constantly uh you know we're a nice little close community we would love to have you so please come check us out um we're on twitter for as long as it lasts at tf radio we're on facebook instagram all that good stuff um you definitely want to subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, just search for Radio Free Cybertron on YouTube. Um, we don't post placeholders for the live stream anymore. So if you want to be notified when we go live, uh, subscribe to us and try to hit the notification icon. Sometimes it works. Sometimes YouTube decides that we're for kids and disables that. But uh, we try to fix that as soon as we can when we uh, notice that's happened. We're not for kids. We're, we're PG-13. We say asshole, or I do. Um, I mean, I guess, you know, we could go, like, hard PG-13 and, uh, you know, allow one F-bomb per show, but Brian doesn't like that. So, we'll just have to let that slide. That probably would be a good way to guess to be uh, not for kids, though, so we probably should reconsider that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also available on your podcast aggregator of choice, uh, so you can find us anywhere, basically. Um, if you like what we're doing and you have an extra couple minutes, like you know, stop and write us a polite letter, by which I mean, uh, give us a good review on uh, your podcast service. Um, that generally helps out with our visibility, gets more people to uh, find the show. 
uh, doesn't you know cost you anything but a little bit of time. So if you can do that, please by all means. Um, you know this is normally the point in the show where I would say John DeLuna is not here with us, but he actually is this week. So John, how do we find you on the internet? Oh, you can find me at that John D everywhere. Short and sweet. Okay, um, Rob Springer is also not with us on a regular basis and hasn't been for like 10 years, I think. Uh, but as always, Rob's a part of the family. Um, you can find him at Robo Rob Springer on Twitter or zonebase.org. Uh, he's also got his podcast, uh, Transform Squadron, a new episode of that just went up recently. So be sure to check out all the interesting stuff Rob's doing. Again, Brian Kilby was not with us this uh, episode because he was celebrating his anniversary. Um, you can find the things he does at briankilby.com. Sometimes he's on Twitter at bkilby, but I can't guarantee when um, or for how much longer because uh, like Twitter's doing everything it can to kind of self-destruct this week. So we, uh, we're kind of tentative on what the future of that is even going to be at this point, I think. Um, I think me and Rob have basically abandoned Twitter altogether at this point because they finally shut down uh, the original form of TweetDeck and the new TweetDeck is going to be paywalled at the end of this month. So, like, that's kind of the end of it for us, I think. Yeah, I, I'm just kind of lingering, waiting to hear back on a couple of people uh, for, you know, things where it's harder to... Uh, you know get to me otherwise mm -hmm. and then after that i'm just probably just going to close my account because mm -hmm. just i i've hit my limit as to what i will put up with and yeah. it took me longer than it should have yeah same well on that note rob uh where do we find you on the internet um at the moment i do also uh come visit tfradio.net uh slash discord i you know post sporadically but i am there um you can find me on YouTube at Flailthroughs, which is my uh, gaming channel, mostly Gundam games. Currently, Gundam Battle Operation 2, available on PlayStation Network and Steam. And uh, this last week was the uh, uh, Fukuoka New Gundam in the PSN version, which, <laughs> as I mentioned before, has a gigantic uh, fin funnel weapon, which is technically actually the stand for the statue, which, you know, very creative, also yeah. funny. Um no idea what's coming this week, but every uh, every Thursday uh, morning at about uh, 1 a.m. Eastern is when they uh, update. So check out my channel Thursday mornings to see what's been added to the game. And uh, beyond that, I got a Patreon if you want to support what I'm doing over there, patreon.com slash flailthroughs. And if you'd rather just uh, throw stuff at me, tfradio.net slash claylist. I just found out that all of the Jeremy Brett Sherlock Holmes series is available on Blu-ray, so I just added that to my wish list because that is the absolutely definitive version of Sherlock Holmes, and everybody should watch it. Is that the thing that several years ago you asked me to try to capture audio from for the original Toy Detective segment? It is indeed, and okay. I, fi I finally did find the, uh, the actual uh, track uh from that apparently somebody did uh put the soundtrack on youtube eventually and i was able to get a clean version so. oh nice but yeah like excellent series um it's i'll keep it short but jeremy brett actually brought the the actual books to the set to make sure that they followed the the real original stories ah one of so, those people yes so <laughs> yeah so definitely worth a watch if, if if that is your kind of thing really really excellent show um, did you slash do you want to plug your uh replacement social media presence? Nah. Okay, that's very valid. Don, how about you? Uh, I can be found on Twitter right now at hmrc the number four evr. I will have to look at alternatives, even though I'm very confused by Discord. Really confuses me. I I can do our chat, but the layers of Discord is extremely confusing to me so mm -hmm. you can reach me on discord uh where else i may land up i do not want to go back to facebook at all uh so i will post in some fashion whenever i find some place that i can understand because uh, i am not the most tech savvy person oh i know shock <laughs> um 
I also have an Amazon wish list, tfradio.net slash Don List. Yay, you got it. <laughs> yes, I've been practicing. Uh, I've, I've curated it a little bit, taken a few things off that uh, my wife added, wanted to add, Brian to add to it, and I've removed them, uh, as we mentioned last <laughs> week. Um, so I uh, like that shirt, Don. I think that will look good on you. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I have, I still have those Darmok and Jalad tour shirts up. I believe if they're still available, so I like those. Um, and that's that's about it. Diecast. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Diecast Two. You can like my Facebook page at Reviews by Diecast. You can see my reviews at tfradio.net slash reviews or youtube.com slash RFC reviews. It's also my birthday this month. So if you want to send anything my way uh, or you just want to be nice or anything, uh, tfradio.net slash diecast list. And I'll be on Twitter till Twitter don't work no more. So next week. Maybe, (laughs) maybe. (laughs) Um, you can find me mostly in our Discord. It's my favorite place to interact with our listeners, especially, and just to talk about Transformers and stuff in general. Um, I do have a presence on uh, the Mastodon service. Uh, look, just search for uh, at ChrisRTXV. If I understand how Mastodon works correctly, you can find that through whatever specific iteration of Mastodon you use, and it should take you to the right account. I can't guarantee how active I'm going to be on that in the long term. At this point, I'm like trying to rebuild what I had on Twitter in terms of like people I follow and stuff to kind of get myself set back up. But, uh, you know, if that goes fine and nothing catches on fire with that, I will hopefully have some level of activity there. Um, Otherwise, you can find the things I do on the internet at playwithphotography.com. That includes toy galleries, articles I've written, things like that. Um, and I have an Amazon wish list of my own at tfradio.net slash chrislist if you would just like to do a random act of kindness at me. All right, I think that will do it for our show this week. Thank you all so much. Thank you guys for being here, and we'll see you all next week. Take care, everybody. See you, everybody. Recording stopped. There we go. Hooray. All right, I'm going to stop the re- stop the stream too. Good night everybody. Bye live audience. Thank you. Bye. As I sit here waving to the camera that's both turned off and covered up. Yeah. <laughs> um any notable audio issues from me? No. At any